Hey everyone. In today's video, I'm going to cover another very common part to fan on both the dual boiler and the oracles, the triac board. So if you've arrived here and your machine is too hot or too cold, then you're probably in the right place. Before we start though, I want to stress that this video is aimed at two skill levels. Someone who is comfortable in swapping out the triac board and terminating some wires. And then there's those that are competent working with live mains, voltage and a soldering iron. If neither of these is you, then please book in your machine with a professional instead. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move on. A bad triac board can present itself in a few different ways, and we'll go through each of those next. After that, we'll cover how to diagnose and repair the board. Then finally, I'm going to show you how you can make sure to avoid this issue on your machine with a cheap $15 device. Okay, let's start with a brief overview of what the triac board does, and then what causes it to go wrong. The triac board does one job, it turns on and off power to the three boilers based on what the temperature sensors tell it, and that's it. These usually fail for two reasons, either a bug or something has crawled in and fried itself on one of the triacs, or which is more common, you likely have a leak somewhere, and when I say somewhere, it's usually the steam boiler, and it's usually the ports that are right under the triac board. Yes I know, my animations suck. Ok, so now we know briefly what it does and why it breaks, let's see how we can recognise when our triac board is faulty, hopefully save it before it goes on to damage the machine even further. Here are some symptoms to look out for in no particular order. Overheating. First off, you might see the temperature creep above the set mark. This happens when the power to one of the elements remains on. If you see this, then you still have time to act and avoid blowing the thermal fuse. So turn off the machine now and unplug it. Underheating, if it's not reaching temperature, then you're too late I'm afraid. The machine has already gone through that first stage. You'll need to repair the triac and replace the thermal fuse. Which, I can tell you now, is not fun. Well actually, it's not so bad on the dual boilers, it's the oracles. Stalled heating. If it's heating up slowly, it's again because one of the boilers isn't working. Temperature drift. Drifting in and out of range is also a symptom that one boiler is off and the other two are struggling to maintain the temperature. And you can see an example of that here where it's gotten to the right temperature but then it starts to flash again as it's drifting out. Then finally, you may notice the top lid being hot when the machine has been switched off for a long while. This is similar to the first symptom where power to the boiler is stuck on. So unplug it now while you still have chance. Ok, so now we have an idea what to look out for, let's dig in a little more to see which part of the board is faulty. This is necessary if you are looking to repair the board yourself rather than replace it. An easy way to find this out is to go into the self check menu and look at the temperatures of the three boilers. Once you've identified which boiler is affected, let's take a look inside and carry out some further checks. At this point, I'd also suggest that you watch this video on how to identify leaks and replace O-rings, as it will very likely be required to complete this repair. Otherwise, you'll find yourself with a damaged triac board again. Ok, let's go through a brief disassembly and then we'll take a closer look at the board. Before we start, I just want to mention that there's main voltage running through this board, even when the machine is turned off at the front panel. So just be aware of that if you ever have your hands close by. This is why it has a plastic enclosure over it. First things first, do a visual inspection. Sometimes, especially when one of the triacs is blown, you'll see obvious burn marks on the board. If you don't see anything, then let's move on to testing. We are going to be testing live mains voltage here, so I recommend you make sure your machine is plugged into an RCD circuit. I always do this while standing on a rubber mat too. Let's arm ourselves with a bit more theory so we can understand what we're doing. 
The triad board is split into three sections that all look the same. Each one controls one of the elements, like so. What happens is, the main PCB gets information from the temperature sensors and decides if it needs to turn on or off the boiler to maintain the heat. If it wants more heat, it will send a 12 volt signal to the triac board via the little white connector you see at the top. This signal goes into an opto isolator, which in turn lets through a gate voltage to the triac. The triac receives this, then opens up to allow current to flow through to the boiler. Okay, everyone got that? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. So, with the machine turned off but switched on at the plug, we can carry out these tests without heating up the rest of the machine. Bear in mind though, if you have a boiler that's stuck on, you will want to complete this test fairly quickly before it gets too hot and blows the thermal fuse. Ok, so with one metre probe on ground, let's test the three boiler circuits. You may already know which one it will be if you've been into the self-check menu, but let's make sure. Now, power comes in from the grey wire to all three boilers, as you can see. With the machine off, there shouldn't be any power being sent to the boilers, so that's the first check I would do. You can see here that one of the boilers has a voltage going to it. What's interesting here is that where I live, our mains voltage is 240 volts, so that means we are only getting half through. This is a good indication in my experience that the triac is ok, and instead the opto isolator has failed. It's basically only opening up the triac gate halfway. If it was the triac, most of the time they fail short, so you'll see the full voltage coming through. On this machine we can just replace the opto, but whenever a triac fails you should replace the opto too as it usually blows from the triac short. So let's swap the part out and I'll be right back. Quick tip here, these boards have conformal coating on the base, which can be a pain to remove. But I find if you have some cutters like these with a the flat side, you can snip off the old legs and remove the coating at the same time. We'll just replace the conformal coating that we took off. Job done. OK, with that swapped, let's see if it's working. Looks good. So, now I've shown you how to fix your machine, let's cover a couple of ways that you can prevent this from happening. Before we can prevent it though, let's summarise why this happens. By and large, the vast majority of people watching this video are here as a result of leaking O-rings. Water leaks coupled with the location of the triad board are a recipe for disaster. We can prevent this two ways. And, and these are just my own thoughts, so feel free to comment if you have some of your own methods. But the first reason in my opinion is the lack of conformal coating on the component side of the board. Breville waterproof the underside, but more often than not, steam is getting inside the enclosure and then condensing into water at the top, right around where the components are. Looking online, I found this silicon based coating. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a high temperature sealant, so a couple of coats of this should stop the problem from happening in the future, I reckon. The other method I think is useful and more practical for most is to use a smart plug or something with an energy monitor on it. Set it to monitor amps so you can get an idea of when your machine is heating up. If you see it pulling amps when switched off, for example, then you know the triac board is gone. To help, I've done some testing on this machine with different boilers switched so you can easily see which boiler is turning on and when. 
Okay, I think that covers most of what I intended to. So I hope this has helped you put life back into your machine and learn a little along the way. Thanks for watching.